Please welcome Taryn Killam yeah. to our show. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Nice to see you, Taryn. Congrats, Taren. fly, Eagles, fly, and what have you. <laughs> My brother's a huge Eagles fan. So oh, really? Like, huge, huge. I, since since before, like, I was a football fan. I, and, and a really arbitrary one. He was like, I like green and I like birds. <laughs> okay, okay, that was the question. <laughs> How did he become a fan? Green and birds. All right, we'll take it, right? Well, you, 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 have, you are a, a, a native Californian, so it makes sense. You, you Correct, live, eat, yeah. and breathe the Rams, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I, yeah, like, and Los Angeles specifically, like, born and raised, didn't have a team most of my life, and just kind of always vowed that I'd be all in from the ground up of whichever team we got back, be right. it Rams, Jaguar, whoever it was, and it just so happened that that the Rams came home. So yeah, uh, yeah, and it's been a it's been a fun <laughs> it's been a fun six years with them. Yeah, LA's and been a... now we're now we're taking our medicine. Yeah, yeah. no, no, I know. And, and so, but LA's been a weird football town. It's you know the the Rams, the Raiders. I, I don't remember like exactly the history, but you you know the Rams. They did they started in LA, the, yeah. and then they went to St. Louis, and then back to LA, and. And you were exactly, there. You were a fan. Yeah. You came up as a, like a you know when the Rams had Eric Dickerson, correct? Well, so no, I I, I, I full disclosure probably switched allegiances. That both teams left when I was like ten years old. But I think for that first decade, the team I was more aware of was the Raiders. Quite honestly, because you're dealing with like Marcus Allen, Howie Long, right. Ronnie Lott, Bo Jackson, you know, and it's it's the Madden franchise at that point, right? Um, the first game I ever went to, like I was less than a year old, was a Rams game. So I see some synchronicity in that. But for <laughs> me, it was more about just like getting to I, I love where I'm from and I love football. Yeah. And, and I wanted to have a home, a home, t a home team to root for. <laughs> so I kind of like went all in. Also knowing that we were going to have like the most beautiful sports stadium in the oh world. My God. Right. So yeah. I wanted to ask you about that, Taryn, because, you know, it was really interesting when L.A. all of a sudden got to, from zero teams to two teams and the, the Chargers were playing in the soccer stadium and the, the Rams were playing in the old Coliseum, which I've been yeah. to before. And it's, it's a historic building, but quite frankly, it's kind of a dump. And then totally. both of those teams get this brand new gorgeous stadium. So what is that place like? I haven't had a chance to get there yet. They had the Super Bowl there it's last truly year. It's so beautiful, like, I, and and because I've been like such a such a hyper loud fan, <laughs> the second that the Rams touched down in Los Angeles, I've 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 sort of been I've ingratiated myself to the team. So I got to visit while they were building the place. Like I I was there when it was just like a hundred foot hole in the ground, <laughs> and then I was there when it was just down to the studs. So uh, there's so many like cool details that people don't even realize. The Rams locker room is in a spiral shape like a ram's horn like wow the wow the locker room is a horn and Whoa. the same thing with the chargers it's a lightning bolt it's this jagged diagonal thing it's so little details like that like they really thought about the artistry driving up it's beautiful it just it's got this huge like beautiful wave they tried to really like lean into the southern california beach palm tree vibe like both sides of the stadium are open air and they have these canyons with like palm trees and succulents wow like, yeah just a work of art so they I, still haven't figured out the park <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. anything in that area is going to be problematic when you get into an automobile yeah, so but you had me at part succulents. of our identity it wouldn't make sense <laughs> if driving there was easy. yeah it's a breeze uh so i have to ask you the nfl pile on you are already on social media, uh, you know, on uh, Instagram, I think, is your, your platform of choice, espousing your take on the games. Uh, uh, so you, these things synergize, your adoration, your love. So it all now becomes your job to be on it, uh, uh, on this level. Is that a wonderful thing, or be, does having it as a job kind of detract from very it? Very astute, very mm -hmm. astute. Yeah, careful what you wish for. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. <laughs> um, the, it, it, it's both. It, quite honestly, like I coming into it, I was like, oh, what a dream! I have to be consumed by football, and then you know, create entertainment based around that, which is pretty much what I'd be doing with my free time. Um, I love having an excuse to watch football on Sundays <laughs> that literally pays the bills. Yes. Like, yeah. like my wife, you know what I mean, can't argue that like, hey, come on, <laughs> can you can you focus up a little bit more? Can you <laughs> this is work now. Yeah. Well, so, so that that's that's mm -hmm. the plus side. The bottom, the the bad side, the downside is like, you know, I'm a season ticket holder at SoFi for the Rams, and anytime I go there now, 
the show and the producers are like, hey, maybe we can get you to get some footage while you're on the field. So right. when I'm at the home games rooting for my team, I want to I want to grab a hot dog. I want to grab a whiskey. I want to sit and watch the game. So now I have these like work obligations ah. in my recreational time. And that's where I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this part. Well, you now let me ask you. So you're 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 married to uh, Colby Smolders, who is, um, you know, we 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 adore her from the Marvel Universe and How I Met Your Mother and so on and so forth. And this is the classic conundrum that I think is probably you know talk about a football widow, though there are a tremendous amount of women who are absolutely into uh, football as well. Uh, which dynamic exists in your home? Yeah, she is. She's the widow, widowiest widow of all time. Like I brought her to the <laughs> NFC uh, uh, conference championship, going like, "This will do it." Yeah, she, we are going to beat the Niners in SoFi, go to the Super Bowl. She's going to feel the energy. She's going to be bitten by the bug. <laughs> I was sort of watching her, and she's she's the best. So, of course, she's supportive while right. there. Mm -hmm. We get in the car, and I'm, like, still sweating. My face is bright red. I've lost my voice. And I go, <laughs> I turn over to her, and, and <laughs> I was like, so what would you think? How was it? Mm -hmm. And she just looks over so earnestly and goes, I really – like that you like it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I've heard that. Oh, I've heard that in my own too. life. And oh, you know yeah. exactly. What, and therein, <laughs> therein is the love. That is the love, right? That's love. That's the whole thing. So, a very cool. <laughs> so the show itself is for people who don't know. It's a sort of a. To me, it seems like uh, Talk Soup meets uh, The Daily Show. Mm. This is um, it. This and, is it. Uh, yeah, uh, meets football. Exactly. It's and you, a, you can you, kind of insert your favorite comedy show meets football and like our, the episode that just aired yesterday we did a whole sort of thesis on how we can make our show more accessible to non-football fans <laughs> and by the end of it kind of own up to the fact that if you don't love football you might miss <laughs> a lot of the references but um we're the first comedy show produced by nfl films like we are an nfl nfl company endorsed comedy show which um I honestly thought would come with a lot more pitfalls. Well, I you, you, for you, sure. You've got to have, I mean, you have access to those. Brand. You can't say this, you can't do that. Right. Yeah. And so far, not really. Like, it's pretty shocking. Okay. And then on top of that, like, we have access to all of their archival footage. Not Ooh. from just this season. From every season that's ever amazing. filmed stuff. Oh, wow. that's, that wow. is, that's the gold mine. Man. Yeah. It is. It's overwhelming, quite honestly. Like, that's the thing that we're still, like, you know, chipping at this huge, giant monolith going, like, how how do we best use this? Because, yeah. uh... Yeah. yeah, and you it's, did. It's, as, it is a gold, a gold mine. Like as a say. matter of fact, I was watching the episode, and, and you started with... You had a whole montage of players letting the ball uh, bounce off of their helmet, <laughs> and it started with... Um, oh, who do you call it? Oh, uh... Drop that pass. It was just thrown right to him. He should have had a touchdown. Who was it? This past Sunday... Um, it, oh, it was uh, Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett dropped oh, a yes, touchdown yes, pass. Oh, sorry, hit, and yes, 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 So yes, that's yes. what kicked it all off. And then, right. I, I mean, it, it went to, like, because I, listen, I'm a football fan my entire life. I loved waking up on Saturday morning and watching Inside the NFL. And uh, that was like, that, you know, and then you, you might get a kick out of this. Uh, my daughter has a friend. She's in high school. And I find out that her last name is Facenda. And I go, Hang on a second. <laughs> yeah. Well, NFL Films was uh, around here. Yeah. yeah. And like that's her great grandfather. Wow. And I was like, oh like, my, yeah. Can you please pass me <laughs> <this one?"> <laughs> <laughs> the frozen peas? Yeah. Yes. So I, I really do appreciate that. That it's not only the current stuff, but you th that you have access and that you do access all of that old stuff. You know, for so you know maybe this stuff isn't made for people that aren't football fans, but for those of us that are. I totally appreciate well, I'm, that. Well, I'm, I'm not the uh, – Preston and I are, are, are you know, where these guys are more, uh, you know, in, intensely sports-based. But um, yeah, I watch I, – I enjoy it because you, there, there, are, there are skits, there are, there, there are riffs that – so if you're not connecting with every single reference, right. the general – is such a general good vibe that it works. So I think you're, oh, on, I appreciate think you're on track, yeah. That's so kind, yeah. I mean, you know, it, it, the the sort of uh, – the theme of the show more than anything is just passionate fandom. So hopefully that's an entry point, 
no matter if you're a passionate fan about football or or musical theater. We literally we, <laughs> our schedule show this past week was a Sondheim parody. Right. You know, yeah, it, well, it speaks to sort of the duality, the kind the kind of like a uh, uh, grab bag of interests that I have. You know, I I love football. I'm diehard. I love comedy. That's the huge passion of mine. But I also love musical theater and all things Marvel and comic books. You know, so we we just we just try to make it a party more than anything else. Well, let me ask you, because sports, you know, we have our sister station, our, our, our sports station. Um, it, it, they have to walk a fine line because you also have to be, it's the very nature of the beast that you have to be critical. You have to be doing postmortems and assessing and, and you know, calling people to task. Um, so you're, you have to walk that line because you want to be inviting to all those potential athletes you might want to get on the show. But... You also have to kind of play to the crowd that expects that. Uh, what, what was exactly what? right? I mean, it, it's so true. And and honestly, like, it, we have we have some pretty great writers. Uh, you know, uh, Bennett Weber has written for the SBs and the NFL Honors for years now, and did all of uh, Riggle's picks on Fox. You know, really smart, <laughs> funny guy, Sarah Tiana. Like, there is no more diehard sports fan that I've ever met in my life, and she's just the funniest person ever. So that, that they're pretty well calibrated to that. It is it, it's it's um it's then then offering yourself up and and comedy, which is subjective right. to that sports culture. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Like <laughs> that like can sting, but is also great because we're all sports fans, so we get it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like and yeah, and 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 you know, hold us to task in terms of like if we're if we're gonna make fun of the Jets fans, you better believe they're bringing out all their receipts. <laughs> right, 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 now, right. But you know, players, I think a lot of players do have a sense of humor about you know things that happen within the game, and and I don't know if you've caught any of Jason Kelsey and Travis Kelsey's podcast at all. Yes, I exactly. mean, so the two they're the weeks, funniest, and they're great, and they actually have a great great sense of humor about you know the the game that they played the yes. previous week and and you know in two weeks in a row you know jason took a hard hit against the lions and then the following week uh travis took a hard hit against the 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 chargers and the way that they were yeah. busting each other's chops and really you know took it like a champ as far as the, the comedy is concerned i thought was really really great it's awesome. I mean, I've never met Jason, but Travis, I've done a, a charity that happens in Kansas City uh, for uh, it's the big slick. So it's Stone Street and right. Rob Riggle and Keckner and Sudeikis and Paul Rudd. Mm. They do this big cha uh, charity for Children's Mercy Hospital, which is so fun and like the best weekend ever. And Travis has been there a few times and he is He's, it's not fair, but he's like funnier than most comedians. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's really like, he's the most charismatic six foot six, <laughs> 250 pound person I've ever met in my life. Uh, so Taryn, you're, you know, quite familiar with the, uh, the fans here in Philadelphia. And the only thing this time of year uh, that could overshadow an undefeated record in the NFL is the fact that the <laughs> Phillies are in the World <laughs> Series right, right now. It is the only thing that could overshadow things right now. It is unbelievable here right now. Even our soccer team, our professional soccer team, is going to the finals. In L.A.? Yeah. In L.A. In LA. In LA. Amazing. It is insane here. Um, What... <laughs> What, what do you think What's about... in the water? What's in the water, <laughs> I, know. I should say. The I water. The, in the water. Yeah, the water. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, do you want to you take a stab at, uh, at what you think the Eagles are going to do for the remainder of the season? Oh, uh, uh, I, 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 I honestly, like, the way that they're playing... Because th <laughs> there was a jinx that that like the NFL social media put up. They're like, "What previous uh, undefeated uh, teams? You know, what? How, how did they do in the postseason? You know, and it shows like back to 2018, which teams were seven and zero, eight and zero, and then where they ended up. But the way that the Eagles are playing, I th I I you know, I think that I'd be shocked if they're. I mean, I, I I would put all money in for certainly conference finals. They're going to the NFC finals. Um, and I and it'll be an upset if they're not in the bowl. They're just there's just yeah. such a AJ the way that AJ is playing the the entire defense surrounds AJ Brown and he still catches these passes <laughs> from Jalen like, yeah. effortlessly. Taryn, in, in 2009, the Phils were in the World Series against the Yankees and uh, they played a home game and then across the street the uh, the 
uh, Eagles played the Giants. So it was two New York versus Philly games in, in, in South Philly the same night. Uh, tonight, game five in South Philly. Fortunately for us who are going to the game, the Eagles are in Houston, so we don't have to deal with 70,000 yeah. other yeah, people yeah, you know, yeah. parking there. But uh, it is a really magical time here in Philly. Do you, and speaking of the World Series, do you have any thoughts about uh, how that's going so far? Uh, you know, Houston's Houston's bad karma, I, st- I think, is to, you know, <laughs> despite no hitters, no hitters last night aside. Yeah, um, I, I think I think the Phillies take it for sure. And, I, and I'm certainly rooting for the Phillies because um, uh, yeah, uh, Chris Peasy is our showrunner, hu- huge Philly guy. Philly sports through and through and um I, I'm not as baseball uh knowledgeable but he came in furious and I guess that the the previous game the Houston won was like watch the pitcher, watch the pitcher. He's, rubbing, he's rubbing his fingers all over his, his uniform yeah. <laughs> that we, cheater moniker man that the the Astros are going to be carrying that around for the rest of yeah. days and and yeah and large part it's deserved you know like they, yeah, they have that yeah for that re- for a reason yeah. do you yeah. think that we've talked about this often because you have a lot of transplants out in uh, in la obviously and um you know so the, the perception's always been they sort of like a ragtag you know fan base and we know there's actually a lot of philly fans out there adam mckay and adam goldberg and a lot of you know people from this area uh do you encounter in you know outside of it and just you know outside of just your uh, your football stuff just as you're doing your comedy stuff a lot of philly fans out there a hundred percent. Yeah. Rob McElhaney is a huge yeah. Philadelphia fan. Um, yeah. I, I mean, you said it perfectly. LA is such a transplant city. California is also such a massive state yeah. too. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of space for, for people to come in. You know, we, the Rams just got their butts handed to them once again by San Francisco, but San Francisco is a dynasty California team. So that like, that's not as shocking to me. Dallas always shows up really well, you know, at home games out here for us. Um, And like I said, you know, the Philly presence is everywhere. PZ, uh, one of our writers, uh, Pat, is he he called in sick this week? Air quotes. (laughs) Called in sick, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're you're, you're hip to that. I mean, but I love that. That it's a not it's it, it's an identity of this city that I love. Yeah. That I wouldn't change for anything because you get that melting pot of of point of views, histories, backgrounds, fandom. Yeah. Um. And I just think it makes for more interesting conversation. You know, who nice. I, who wants homogeny? No, I agree. Well, there's plenty of interesting conversation that's going on in the NFL pylon. Uh, you can find it on Prime Video Wednesdays at 7 p.m. or when the uh, the new episodes uh, come on board. So good luck with everything, uh, Taryn. Looks like you're having fun doing it. So I'm sure people are going to love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Thank and you for having me. Tell your wife we love her. Yes, right? we, will. we love her. All right, yeah. Taryn Killam, guys. Yeah. Yeah.